In this tactics discussion video, we're going to be revisiting an old topic that I had uh, covered months ago when I first had started the channel. I think my first tactics video was with Great John Umber, and then after that it was talking about my Rob list, which was the uh, pair to that one. So we're revisiting Rob Stark in lieu of a new release for, for the faction that I think is really going to make him come alive. Before we dive into what Rob Stark brings to the faction and how we're going to construct this list around him, I first want to talk about the release that's kind of prompted me to revisit Rob Stark and make this video, and that's the release of the House Tully Cavaliers. Now these units are very similar to the Knights of Casterly Rock. They still have, they have the Lance Rule, they are Cavalry. Uh, they have the 3 plus save that the Knights have, but they have a 5 plus morale, which is a little bit better than what the Knights bring. They still hit on 3s, they're still speed 5, their first attack stat is 6, but then they got a slight bump over the Knights of Casterly Rock where they throw 4 dice on their last rank instead of 3, and, the, and they trade Lannister Supremacy for Embolden, which... Uh, gives a plus one morale buff to every unit within short range of them. They do come in at a pretty pricey tag at nine points, but uh, we're bringing we're going to try and construct the list around these guys instead of kind of constructing the list around Rob Stark. But I think as we get into it, we're going to realize that they're both kind of they both kind of benefit each other at the same time. So for Rob Stark. The way I like to start these off is by going over the uh, tactics cards that they bring because we're going to try and work a lot of that into these House Tully Cavaliers. The first one is Hit and Run. This one triggers after a friendly unit completes a melee attack. That unit then makes a free retreat action and automatically counts as rolling a 6 for their retreat distance. If you control the uh, maneuver position on the tactics board, any enemies they're disengaged with become weakened. So this card's going to benefit our uh, Tully Cavaliers quite a bit. Uh, this can happen after they charge in, too. So they can uh, run in and or charge in and hit, and then you can play hit and run to back them out. A, a really important distinction on this card is that the uh, trigger for this is after a friendly unit completes a melee attack. It's usually cards like this uh, have the trigger of after this friendly, after the unit makes a, or activates and makes a melee attack or something like that. Like usually it's an activation that prompts these kinds of things. But for this one, this means you can take the swords or the combat position on the tactics board, force the Tully Cavaliers to make an attack if they're engaged, you know, just throw your six or four dice or whatever it is, and then play hit and run to get them out of there. Now they roll a six on that, so they're backing up 11 inches, so it's going to be a little tough for anything that's not cavalry to make it to them when they, when they run out. And then when they uh, get ready to activate next, they move their five first, and then they can close that gap very fast. I mean, it's not difficult for them to do that. I think they'd only need to roll a one unless your opponent is trying to uh, back the unit out that they disengaged from. Plus, if you are playing uh, uh, the... If you're playing to the Stark's advantages by taking that maneuver position, having the unit become weakened kind of solidifies that that unit that you've just disengaged from isn't going to be able to kind of get away in an effective way because you're uh you've already you've weakened them so they kind of become a little bit less effective if they can actually get to the knights or not knights the cavaliers that's going to happen a lot rob's next card is superior positioning and this triggers when a enemy unit charges uh that enemy must roll an additional charge distance die and select the lowest result if they're charging rob's unit uh his unit can make a, th a free three-inch maneuver before they uh, the enemy moves. So this is another fun way to protect the Cavaliers as well uh, because they do not like getting engaged. If you've played a lot against some double or quadruple Knights of Casterly Rock lists, one of the best ways to kind of combat them is to engage them because the Lannisters don't have a lot of tricks to get them out other than that uh, maneuver position. And that's not really the position that they're after most of the time i mean they'll take it if they need it but they're really going to be trying to get some of those zones to get their cards to turn on and that can be up to three different zones for them depending on which commander they're playing so it can get a little tough for them to want to do that 
But for the uh, Cavaliers, if someone gets the drop on you and might and gets uh, some movement shenanigans that you didn't expect, and uh, is going to try and get a charge in on those uh, Tully Cavaliers, you can play superior positioning to tr to make it a little bit more difficult for that unit to connect with the Cavaliers. And if you are trying to keep Rob safe for whatever reason, uh, getting that free maneuver first is going to make it uh, very difficult to almost impossible for them to get to Rob's unit. The last card that Rob brings to this list would be a uh, tactical regroup. When a friendly combat unit activates is when this card triggers. That unit may then make a free retreat action and restore D3 wounds. Uh, if that unit's within long range of Rob Stark, the enemies they get disengaged from become vulnerable. Now, this is amazing for Cavaliers because this card triggers when the friendly combat unit activates. So that's before the Cavaliers have to commit to what kind of uh, action they're going to be performing that turn. So you can activate the Cavaliers, play tactical regroup. Uh, disengage or retreat from the unit that they're engaged with to just charge back in and do a ton of damage with that lance rule. And if they do happen to be within long range of Rob Stark, which is not uh, super uncommon given the way you're going to be playing this list, that enemy unit also becomes vulnerable. So if they are a little bit more of a stout unit, something like Flayed Men or... Uh, um, like any 3-plus save unit out there, that vulnerable token is going to come in handy to make sure that the Tully Cavaliers do as much damage as they can in hopes that they don't get locked up in that combat again. So how do we want to construct this list? So first, I am not going to start off with which unit I want to put Rob in. I want to talk about how many Cavaliers I'm bringing in this list. So I'm not going to go too nutty with the the cavalier sprinkling in this one i am bringing two units which does seem like a lot because that's 18 points that's almost half of your list put into these but every single one of rob's tactics cards really play into the strengths of the cavaliers and make sure they do their their best you know they can be them best selves on the table um so we're gonna start with those two units and this next part is going to sound even less interesting, but you'll have to hear me out on this. The we're we're taking nothing but sworn swords for the rest of the combat units in this list, other than Greywin. So the reason why I want to do that is sworn swords are kind of like the middle of the road unit of the universe. They've got a pretty good uh, morale say or morale stat with a six plus. Given that you've got two short range bubbles of embolden means that uh, you'll be able to more likely than not have that always be a five plus and if you're putting trees down on the table it should be a four plus most of the time so the morale wise the stark sworn swords aren't really going anywhere they have a pretty decent save at a four plus and speed five is not bad either. They're not super slow, but they're not super fast. I mean, they can get to the middle of the table relatively early and uh, start holding down some zones. The other reason to bring Stark Sworn Swords is I do believe these guys are probably some of the best five-point units. Or I would, I'll probably go ahead. I'll say they're the best five-point unit in the game. Like, I don't think uh, Cave Dwellers don't match the output of these guys. Uh, Lannister Guardsmen don't, especially with their uh, reliance on the uh, Guard Captain in order to become mostly relevant during the game. And uh, I really wouldn't put these guys up to the poor fellows either. So they have a really great attack stat. Hitting on fours is meh, but they roll 865 for their attack stat. And that gets uh, altered a little bit by uh, Stark Fury. So they can just D3, do D3 wounds to themselves in order to get plus one to hit and critical blow. So they could be throwing eight dice, hitting on threes, and then those sixes kind of, they explode into extra hits. So it's a really solid unit, and it allows the Stark Sworn Swords to kind of take up objectives. They're not going to be easy to clear off with the morale buff, and they have a, the respectable save. Of course, if they're sundering, 
if they have Sundering units coming into them, that's going to change things up a little bit. But then the Tully Cavaliers can kind of play side by side with them and just make sure that they come into flanks on anything they get, get that double Sundering on the side, and uh, really start clearing them off. So you're really you're picking units off one by one and at, at double the rate too because the Tully Cavaliers are you know, in multiples of two in this list. And if the Stark Sworn Swords end up having to babysit objectives and the Tully Cavaliers have to kind of surge forth and and uh, do the work in the middle of the table or on the far end of the table, they're able to do that with the cards that Rob Stark brings in order to just get them to... Because uh, the Tully Cavaliers want to charge all the time, right? So the every single card that Rob brings... It, well, I guess two cards that Rob brings uh, really support that. And then the uh, the other card that he brings, uh, Superior Positioning, that one's just going to try and help them survive a little bit more as well. So that means that we are putting Rob Stark into a unit of uh, Sworn Swords. So that's not going to be so bad because he is going to be pretty resilient to the panic checks with them typically being at a 5 plus, sometimes a 4. But the Order Wolf's Cunning is going to be really nice because he can kind of take up a position in the middle of the table, try and position himself to where uh, your opponent isn't going to have an easy time getting into him, but still be within long range of him for most of the things that they want. So he can just zap somebody with a disorderly charge. And that's going to try and do a little bit more to protect those Tully Cavaliers as well. And if you have some important Stark Sworn Swords on an objective, that's also going to go a long way into making sure that they stay alive a little bit more if you are getting hit with something that's a little more uh, uh, beefy in terms of combat output. And Grey Wind is definitely not uh, a model to overlook in this list. I know that he seems to be probably one of the uh, worse dogs in terms of the ones that are available. I would put Shaggy Dog above uh, Grey Wind, even though the the attachments that he comes with are kind of not spectacular or something you really don't want in your list. But with having all the crazy positioning with the Tully Cavaliers and the, uh, the brick of three units of Stark Sworn Swords in the middle... Uh, your opponent's not going to have a whole lot of options in terms of trying to make sure that they protect every single side of themselves. So if you have Grey Wind kind of taking up a riding position with one of the Tully Cavaliers that's going after some more uh, uh, staunch or, or some more like solid units, then you're likely to be able to get that vulnerable on the side so you can proc his uh, Stalking Assault. Uh, ability. So definitely don't discount Grey Wind as just another unit that can go sit on an objective or uh, is just a, a sinking activation. With the way the points work out, that only leaves us seven points for NCUs, and that means that your first choice is which three-point NCU do you want. And I don't think that Arya is the greatest uh one to put into this list. You could put both Arya and Sansa in here if you wanted to. Uh, Arya is going to give you a little bit of uh, versatility in terms of the uh, maneuver, but it is only going to be able to target in, uh, an infantry unit and won't be able to work with the Tully Cavaliers. So the unit that I'm going to be, or the, the NCU that I'm grabbing for at my three-point level is definitely going to be Sansa. Uh, Rob Stark has so many situationally fantastic cards, and when you combine those with the uh, Tully Cavaliers and what we want to do with them, they become superb. And just being able to fetch one of those out whenever you want to is really important. I think that it's uh, it's good for Sansa to ha be here so that we can uh, kind of grab whatever we need for whatever situation. Even uh, grabbing a Northern Ferocity when the Tully Cavaliers are stuck in combat and they just need a little bit extra to push them over the top, getting Sundering on those six attacks that hit on threes could be the thing that gets them out and keeps them uh, m m uh, moving around the table. So that leaves us with a four-point NCU, and this one's a little bit more on the tough side to figure out what you want. I know that Catelyn Stark is a really... Uh, common choice for Stark players because her influence just gets so much more output from a unit and the ability to remove condition tokens as well and still be able to you get all of that plus you get the uh, 
the the business on the tactics board is a really great ability. She's an easy one for me to want to grab in this list, but for the most part, I'm I don't think I'm going to be getting a ton of use out of her because the Tully Cavaliers should be crushing through everything they get into. They really shouldn't be uh, getting hung up in combat, and the Stark Sworn Swords are kind of there to exist, so I don't really care about putting max output value on them, although I'm not saying it's a terrible thing. It's just not really what I'm aiming for. That leaves us kind of with looking in terms of Stark NCUs, we're, we're looking at Eddard or Roderick. Now, most of the things in here can get critical blow on their own. They, they have to do it at some... There's always stipulation to the critical blow uh, in this list. The only thing that doesn't get it is Grey Wind, and I'm not sure we're going to be putting that on there at all. So Roderick is... A good NCU, but I'm not really looking at him for this list. And when I look at Eddard, being able to get free healing uh, just for... Well, it's not free healing, but it's uh, healing that doesn't require him to be anywhere. Uh, you just have to either pass a morale test, which is highly likely in this list, or charge, which is something you'll also be doing frequently in this list. I could see putting Eddard in here just to be able to get those extra healing points to keep those Tully Cavaliers going. So Eddard is probably my number two choice for this list. And I'll go ahead and say that Peter Baelish is not really on my radar for this one. Uh, I don't think that what he brings to the list is really going to be beneficial for what the Starks are, or what this list wants to do. Uh, if, if you're really a big fan of him, go ahead and put him in here, but he's definitely not. He's, he's probably, if I had to say, number three for my four-point NC for this list. But the one that I am pulling in is Varys. And the my reasoning for this one is that the Tully Cavaliers don't want to kind of have anything weird sprung on them. So against other Stark players, we want to make sure we can deny those uh, sudden charges. Uh, we want to make sure that we can deny um, taking the combat position if it, if it benefits them, if they're trying to wipe out a unit of Cavaliers before we get a chance to do what we want with them, we can stop that. We can also stop people from retreating out of engagements when it would be beneficial for uh, for them. So I think Varys gives us a little bit more uh, control in a list that almost feels like it wants to play a little bit more controly game. Like we want to control the things that are happening on the table. And if that means stopping someone from healing or proccing one of these really cool replace effects on the tactics board, I think Varys really fits well here. But again, Eddard Stark is a real strong second for me because healing back wounds to the Tully Cavaliers is just going to keep prolonging their efficacy in the game. So I think the the final the the final NCU uh, setup for me is going to be Lord Varys and Sansa Stark. In terms of uh, game modes, this one would excel at. I think Feast for Crow is going to do pretty well because you can get all these buffs that kind of counteract the negatives from the corpse piles and you'll be able to utilize double cavaliers and gray wind to go get some of those backyard corpse piles that your opponent might drop and i'm talking 1.5 right now because that's the world i have to look forward to right to talk about scenarios in 1.4 is good for competitive players right now but i am trying to look towards the future so those are the ones i'm focusing on I think that Game of Thrones you'll excel at because you have enough bodies to put on objectives and they're solid enough to where uh, you won't have any problems really maintaining those. It's going to be hard for your opponent to wrestle those out from you. New Clash of Kings, this list should be really good on that one. Uh, New Clash of Kings is really strange in that being able to activate after you've deployed from reserves on the back edge of the table uh, really can kind of shift how the game goes. I think it plays a little bit more drawn out because the objectives get contested a lot more consistently and those killy units like the Cavaliers, once they get wiped, they're just coming right back in again, ready to do their work off the off the deployment line. So I think though this list with the survivability of the Sworn Swords and Rob Stark's flexibility, I think it'll do really good there. Uh, in terms of Fire and Blood, I want to say this list would do well, but I also don't know if Sworn's... Because you're, you're going to be 
based on fire and blood right now, your sworn swords are the things that are going to be marked. And them throwing 10 dice is really nice, but I just don't know if they're going to outpace the Cavaliers and get to where they want to. I think they'd probably be coming in as like cleanup units, and that leaves Rob Stark kind of off in the wind. I think you could make a list that works a little bit better for fire and blood with this one, but I don't think it's bad per se. I definitely would want to try that game out to see how it plays out because in my head, I just don't know if 10 dice Dark Sworn Swords are going to get there frequently, especially if your opponent's really aiming a lot of heat on them with their more combat intense units. I think that uh, to excel in the new Fire and Blood, you almost have to bring a list that is nothing but heat units. Like, and I'm talking elite, killy, punchy units where everything on the li on the table if it gets marked is just a disaster for your opponent so think of something like an all umber list somehow like maybe the blackfish with nothing but umbers everywhere that'd be an absolute nightmare on fire and blood uh the other ones are like winds of winter and the dark words dark woods scenario uh it's dark something dark something but uh on winds of winter i think you have enough flexibility in this list to be able to do to do that one pretty well and the dark words i really don't think i want to give any advice on that scenario because i think it does need to change quite a bit before it's functional i think right now it's a little bit too quick uh it almost plays like a worse version of uh old winds of winter so i think that kind of rounds out my tips for the list if you uh have played something like this. I'm sure everybody's kind of eyeballing Rob Stark for the Tully Cavaliers right now. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. I think that the next battle report that I end up posting up is going to have a unit or two of Tully Cavaliers. It might be this exact list or another one that I was messing with. I'm not quite sure how the editing is going to go through with that one, but uh, feel free to let me know what you think about this one and how you're utilizing your Tully Cavaliers or what you might do to combat it if you were playing against them. And do remember to uh, subscribe to us if you haven't subscribed yet. I do post the videos kind of at weird times of the day uh, just because of the way that the rendering works in YouTube. Uh, and if you do subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell as well because that's going to let you know that I've posted something instead of waiting for me to get around to uh, posting these on the Facebook groups. And, of course, like the video if you like the content that I'm putting out. It helps me out quite a bit. Uh, otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I look forward to making the next tactics video for you, but keep your eyes open for uh, a battle report with these Tully Cavaliers. They are really cool, and I'm super excited to play them in Starks.